Hi, Tal. I guess it's just, is it just you and me today? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I, I hope not. Yeah, not, that not, that you're, not that there's anything wrong with you. But. Right, I get it. I understand. No, just a little bit shocked to come in. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm late and come in. It's, well, only two people. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now it's starting to look like more normal. Greetings. Hi, Taylor. Howdy. Let's see. It was uh, Jeffrey's day to lead today, but I think he's out, so I might be uh, leading today. Any notes? I just posted the meeting notes. Um, folks can add themselves to those and add any agenda items. Hey, Pankai. I did. A did you add a review today to the? No, um, no not, okay. not today. Sorry, I've been busy with something else. So. No worries. It yeah. keeps showing that um, like I've hit the re-request re re review on a PR and mm -hmm. And you keep coming back as if you've already done a review and asked for a change. No, something must so, be wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it again. I'm going to click the little button. Uh, oh, lot of, a lot started. of strange things are happening today in various computers today. So not All sure right. what the hell is going on. We had an early morning call and people kept audio drops all the time. Well, we'll figure it out. Uh, networking problems. Mm-hmm. Greetings, folks. Um, we'll get started in a minute or two here. If you have a topic you'd like to talk about, you can add it to the meeting notes. Please add your name as well. Okay. Let's see, what do we got? So I just wanted to say that I didn't do my homework. Um, my, my cat ate my homework. That's my excuse. All right. 
Uh, but we did have a, a shorter week uh, last week, so hopefully I'll get to it this week. I understand. Hey, Bill. All right. Oh, is that? Okay, and there's Watson. I think everybody's connected to audio. So meeting notes and the Zoom chat um, and the calendar invite and all that. This call is being recorded and will be posted to the CNCF YouTube channel for the CNF working group. You probably got the notice uh, when you joined, hopefully, from Zoom. Does anyone have anything they'd like to add to the agenda? Mm. Something's going on with my... Okay, there we go. Google Docs is freezing for me. This... Um, Document might be getting too large. I don't know. 54 pages. November 2020. We may want to archive some of it, but it loaded for me. So does anyone have anything they'd like to add to the agenda? All right. Um, any, are there any ex talks that folks know of that have been accepted that you wanna tell everyone about so that we can have the community know it's interesting for this group? Taylor, this is Oliver. I um, <clears throat> I think I kind of missed when you were, well, I was just too slow to respond when you were asking about adding to the agenda. Um, I'm just looking here, sorry. I, I was curious if we had, because last week we had some conversations and I think we kind of had, uh, doo -doo -doo, I'm looking for it next week. Yeah, like progress, I mean, there was some, I don't know, there was some long conversations there. Uh, I'm just curious about one of the things that, you know, at least I mentioned, uh, I think along with some other comments that were that were aired last last session, you know, about the potential for some sort of high level ambition slash goal slash, you know, maybe not objective, but I think we all I think we generally know why we're here. Um, but I think as far as having some kind of vision to when do we when would we like to have some things done along the way that kind of gives mm -hmm. us a sense of whether we're making that progress or or if we're kind of just standing still and doing circles so i don't know if that's something we can have on the agenda or not or if everyone if there's others who feel like we've already had that conversation and we know what to do i don't know Um, high level goals, um, what is a target? Um, are you thinking like short term, mid term? What are you thinking, Oliver? Like the goal or further out? Uh, if you want, what we could do is when we get to this, there's a, there is actually a discussion that was started, I think, back in March. Um, I, I, I threw something out there. I think we were we just had a lot going on. Um, mm -hmm. I think Ian might have commented on it, and I, I just you know, pushed it again with a sort of to Ian saying, hey, is this something that maybe we could revisit and consider? So if you look up in the discussions, when we get to this point, you'll see there's there is something there. If people want to look at that and maybe maybe we could iterate there to see if something can come out. All right. And are you saying it's in the Google Doc in for March? No, no, it's it's a it's just a discussion on in our um, in our the GitHub, GitHub discussion. Oh, it's, all right. Yeah. Got it. 
I'll, I'll, yeah, I was going to throw it out. It's, it's the very first one, right? CNF working group, high level roadmap slash ambition. Sure. Um, I dropped this in. I feel like we could have a longer discussion about that. So I'm going to maybe put it after, but it's related yeah. to what I was going to go over. Okay. Sounds good. Um, just kind of like how to get started and, and that would tie in where are we going to go, of course. But um, um, let's see. I'll go back and see if there's, there's anything like open. So the conversation. Is uh, Tal, you're saying you didn't get to something? Was it about the free diameter? Oh, no, not exactly, something but I, I, uh, okay. it was That's suggested. Fine. Okay, never mind. <laughs> it's fine. If you didn't, if there's nothing to discuss, Tal, uh, I was just saying if there's anything for today. Um, all right. All right. Um, it's come up. Uh, well, okay, so I'll just kind of jump in then. Um, I had asked if, if anyone has anything for KubeCon, then please um, drop some links. There is going to be an intro and deep dive and maybe um, talking about some of the practices and stuff and going into it at KubeCon. Um, and from the group, so this would be like, who's the CNF working group and what are we doing? But are there any other if there's any other um, talks that y'all know about, then please add them, add them here so that the group knows. And I guess same for ONES, which is uh, same time right before. Uh, I think it's at the start of KubeCon. Um, is anyone involved with MWC or is there something interesting there, Mobile World? Um, Congress in Los Angeles. All right, I'll jump into the rest of the agenda. So leading up to, um, I would I would work backwards if we already had it, Oliver. Um, but if if we don't have something, I don't I don't really want to start a big open discussion then come back. Um, that I guess the general goals right now I, uh, we somewhat have a specific a specific one right now but where does it go beyond that might be of question and the discussion but we do want to end up with a whole set of best practices that um, whether you're ops in an ops team or a developer you could come and say Here's a set of best practices and which ones are useful for me. And that could be something there may be, um, at, well, not just me. There's CNCF will end up with a, some type of um, set, a subset similar to the Kubernetes conformance program is a subset of EDE tests. So there will be some set that's, here's the set that's recommended. Um, that's further out, but right now it's we, we're trying to build that list of here's best practices, and and then they can be pick um, picked a la carte, I guess, for wh whoever's needing them. So if you're implementing, great. If you're building the certification, cool. You're an ops team and trying to look for something, whatever it is. Uh, we're trying to build the set right now, um, but we can come back to like some specific ambitions, Oliver, and that when we look at that discussion. But so if you're coming in the CNF working group and you're saying, where do I contribute? There's been comments about this, like how do I, how do I know where to get started or where can I write stuff? Um, I think we probably need to put more in a, like a getting started or could be a link off the contributor or maybe a section in the contributor um, guide because this stuff will get lost and it might've been mentioned like a year ago, but nobody knows, oh, we have this. 
So that's what this is about. So where can you contribute the best practice proposals, um, adding for any of this, you can get in an ad and that might be async right in to content that's there, um, wherever it is, or you can reach out to someone if you wanna have like a pairing session, working session on stuff. I've been doing that. I'm open, just reach out to me. Um, other people are as well. So best practice proposals, the use cases. And then I think an important thing is um, we do want supplemental content. That's why I'm calling it supplemental. So the exceptions, implementation examples, Tal, you point out a lot of the stuff where it's, okay, how do I actually start using this in practice? I like the concept, but how do I use it? So we need that content. I don't think we're gonna have one document that has everything. It's probably gonna be a whole set and then it'll expand and someone will go, oh, here's my environment. So all of that stuff is good. Um, and if that's where you're passionate or where you're needing to fix things, then we want that. Um, that's all related to the context of why something would be useful and how to use it. And then general updates. You know, if there's people are coming in, um, a lot of y'all have contributed this way in making things clearer in the documentation, um, use cases, everything else. Spelling grammar is always important. And then I think a big one is reference links. So we're talking about a lot of stuff, but being able to go and read, like where did it come from, those resource links and stuff. So um, when you drop them in to the notes um, or the chat, let's try to make sure that they get somewhere like longer term so that everyone else can go and um, read that and learn. Um, so writing up um, existing content. So whether you wanna draft, work on a draft uh, that's existing or new content, we wanna add the references uh, to the external content. So if it's just something that's um, an idea, that's fine probably better for the discussion board, but eventually we need to have enough references that it's clear that this is a good practice or that it's a common use case um, so that we can make decisions on, does this work for me? Like, how does it apply? Um, don't feel that you have to do new content. So trying to make sure that's understood. If, if you feel like you can contribute, but maybe not start from scratch, then we can expand on existing stuff. And it may turn out that it expands enough that we need to split it off into something new. Um, and that would tie in with this, like anything where we feel like a purpose or something is large enough in itself that we can dig into probably should be split off. And then we have smaller chunks that we can complete. Uh, opening pull requests, of course, to add new or to existing content. So then I think one of the other items, um, and I see your comment here, Tal, on HackMD is like, where can we work? So the, the GitHub repo itself, you can put pull requests in um, against existing content in the repo itself. And we can continue to iterate on that. But modifying or doing a direct commit, like. Uh, let's just say you bring up the editor in GitHub, then unless someone's sitting with you or you're doing like a Zoom share, then probably that modification is gonna be you working solo. Um, now you can do, I do Zoom and whatever else, so we can do that. But if you want actual collaborative editing, then we want to support that. And we've created um, different places to do that. So in the, the telecom user group, the CNCF drive, we actually have a, um, a subfolder called CNF Working Group, and you can drop content in here. So this could be the supplemental content, new use cases, um, whatever else. And um, this will be accessible to whoever um, has a link to that, and you can modify that. 
and uh, we have a HackMD. This is a like a whole um, area with different docs. If you're if you're uh, like using Markdown, um, I don't, for those who aren't familiar with HackMD, it's a Markdown editor, and it allows um, multiple people to modify at the same time. You have this split view, so you can see what's rendered versus what you're editing, um, or go straight edit. And you should have access automatically. If you don't, uh, then there may be a setting that's changed. I can check that out, or I can always add you directly. If you send an email, I can add your email address so that you can access um, the HackMD. Um, so I guess for right now, just um, if, if you want access and you don't have access, then ping myself. Um, I'll try to make sure like uh, uh, Jeffrey and Ian and, and some other folks also have um, can make sure and add people. But you should ha have a capability to go in there and work. Uh, you feel free to go use whatever you want. I'm just talking about stuff that we've tried to set up for the group. So if, if, if you're wanting to use another Markdown editor or some other sharing uh, Google Docs type thing, by all means do it. We've used, uh, it's Diagramly, it had a different name. Um, I, I don't remember what that was. I'm just gonna click go here. Uh, yeah, whatever. This is a diagramming software that supports collaborative editing. Draw IO. I think that was what it was originally called. Now it's diagramly. But you can, if you want something besides, say, a, a Google presentation, then you can. Um, you can go into that. and um, share these. And this actually can go into, I don't know if you saw it, I kind of went through quickly, but you can have it saved to Google Drive. So you could actually select like the CNF working group drive and then have um, the diagram saved right in there. And then they can be opened and modified by other people easily. Um, but you can also just upload, you know, like a, if you're, doing something in DIA or whatever you're using, you can do it there as well. Um, and then of course, um, the, the other thing is the GitHub discussions. So we can keep adding here. And I, th I think Tal, one of the things that you were promoting was uh, that the discussions were not lost, like the importance of the discussions happening in the PRs um would continue like if people are wanting to talk about stuff so bringing those over into the github discussions so that they can be ongoing we also have slack and the working group and stuff but for a collaboration i think the hackmd the github discussions and then being able to do any type of google um document or whatever in the google drive would be the main ones so That's really it. I, I just wanted to bring these back up because I think some of them haven't been mentioned in you know over six months that they're there. And if, if you just didn't happen to catch them, you may not even realize that they're available. Any questions, comments? Anything else? Yeah, I, just to say, you know, we have a lot of ways to contribute and to collaborate, mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of up to all of us to take the initiative and, and uh, start generating content. Um, eventually it'll be boiled down, we believe, to, you know, very useful uh, documents that, uh, consumers of this working group would be, be would be able to use but um, um, 
yeah, I think we, we just have to start doing it. <laughs> it's a note for everybody, including myself. All right. Um, yeah, I agree. If if you look at something like um, 12 factor apps, it didn't start um, like this. This is not what they had when it got started. Um, I'm, I can't, I don't, maybe if, if we could dig in a, an old archive or something, but this is expanded. Um, like, you now have the diagrams and I would say some use cases and other content here that you didn't have when this came out. Um, but that's where we are right now. And I think if, if you feel that you can't have, you don't have the time or whatever else, whatever reason to have a completed thing where you say, I'm going to write up something that totally covers concurrency in a way that um, everyone is gonna be satisfied. That's not what we're trying to do right now. We're trying to get any content and build towards this. We'll eventually get towards something where we can say this, this concept, we're happy with where it is today. And so let's say, yes, we can tell people we like that one and then move on. We may come back and update. I, I know personally from looking at like the 12 factor apps and some other places where they have um, things listed over the years, they'll get updated. Um, but right now, what we're saying is anything that you can contribute and try to help add to will help us move towards that goal. And that's what's important. Um, and exactly what you're saying, Tal, just we're, we're wanting people to move forward. And if, if you want help, then um, if you'd like to do something, but don't know where to get started, like here's some ideas, but reach out to me if you are uh, Jeffrey, Ian, or any, any of us and just say, what, where would be a specific area, you know, that you could work? and do some uh, contributions. All right, um, let's move on to Oliver, your ambitions, high-level roadmap. Yeah, I mean, there's, well, let me just say two things. One is this is fairly old. So this, as you say, it's March. So I had just, at the time when we were, you know, we were already several months into it just trying to, for myself, think about, you know, I think even Bill was, you know, early days, we were saying, well, maybe by the summer or, you know, by KubeCon, we might have, you know, our first set of best practices. So, you know, I was just kind of trying to play out with the idea of something lightweight, you know, just to try to give us some, some, some goals. I'm not sure that the right way to do this is to have a, you know, I think we need to either agree or, or disagree to have one. And then if we do, maybe we work on it, you know, offline, because I, I, I think it'll be more efficient way of working. But, you know, the first question is then really, do we feel like we, are there others who feel like we need this as well? This, there's a second part to it as well, for myself at least. Um, and, and, and Taylor, you just walked us kind of through all the different ways that we can help and contribute. Um, I'm not sure if it's just myself, but I, I sometimes start to lose the picture of for example, we, you know, we've been very focused on generating use cases. Uh, we have some use cases that are now, you know, been um, approved. And, you know, I, I don't know how many more we need, right? I, I know we need more. I don't, the, the, the point is, what, at what point do we, are we able to start to extract? Will we know it when we get there and everybody starts to feel comfortable? Or is it something that we can already say today that we're going to need at least 20, 30 use cases before we can start to extract so it's, it's a little bit of what are we trying to achieve but it's also how are we getting there with you know just a a high level view for for people who may not really fully follow the steps that were that were taken does that make sense 
Makes sense to me. We'll let it, other people respond. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense to me as long, I, I like that you called it ambition <laughs> rather than roadmap uh, maybe because it's going to be evolving. Um, what we don't need is a gun to our head <laughs> telling us, you know, get out those best practices by this date. Uh, to an extent, it'll be ready when it's ready, but, you know, we, we need to work towards something. Um, so we, we can keep this, you know, I, I kind of wish sometimes <laughs> we have so many ways to, to contribute, but I feel like the, the most natural way for us at this stage is something like a wiki. You know, it could be Google Docs or HackMD or other things, but, um, you know, this isn't a discussion, but to an extent it should be linked, you know, up front. So anybody coming to the work group will immediately be able to see the roadmap, as long as you make it clear that this is the roadmap is something that's evolving and, uh, you know, we can, we can keep updating it uh, when we feel we're not going to reach that target right now. So we'll just move it forward. Yeah, I agree with you, Tal, as well. I mean, it, it, and, and I was struck, as you can see, even when I wrote, I was like, you know, struggling to recall this a roadmap and ambition. I mean, the point is just to simply say, why am I here? What am I trying to accomplish until we change it? You say, you know, okay, Q1, Q2, Q3, this is what we're hoping for. And we can, you know, we can always adjust it, but I think it at least allows us to also reflect, you know, wow, we were really ambitious, but we didn't get to where we wanted to be. All right, no problem. Well, you know, did we learn anything from that? Great, you know, move on and, and try to be, you know, try to use every lesson learned to the, for the next step. My, my key here, or, or the key word for me is this should be lightweight, right? I mean, it's, it's not meant to do anything else than help us navigate. Yeah, and, and to uh, the point you made, Olivier, earlier that, um, you know, when, when are we actually going to have enough use cases to do something? Well, we already do. I think even one use case should be enough. The, the trick is... <laughs> somebody needs to take the initiative to say, okay, I'm gonna tackle this and start writing the best practices for, for this use case. And uh, m maybe we're just being timid about starting with it, but I think uh, I'm, I'm always in favor of just start sneezing things on paper. <laughs> just, uh, just start writing, nothing is set in stone. Um, part of the reason why I was not so happy with the GitHub uh, process of writing things that it, everything feels just very formal and you know you do a pull request and then there are different people approves there seems to be the, the the barrier of contribution so far has been a little bit difficult uh but if you know if you feel you have something to say about a use case you can just start a google map a google doc sorry and add a lot of to do's in it nothing has to be uh you know i don't think any of us is expecting like a complete thing like the 12 factor uh, website that Taylor saw right now, right? We're, we're going to work towards it. Uh, but we, we, we should, nothing is stopping us from starting it right now with just one use case. Uh, it's just a matter of somebody saying, okay, this is something I know a lot about and I want to give it the opening shot. Um, it's a great opportunity too. You get to really influence uh, kind of the, the ongoing discussion on that topic, right? So. Um, yeah, I, I, an example I give, you know, uh, the work I did on CNF operators, right? I, definitely I need to follow up on that and, uh, and turn it into something uh, more integrated with our work, but uh, it helped me a lot just to start writing um, and give me the, the topics, you know, the, the list of, uh, of points which, which are, could be pain points, could be uh, points of discussion, of interest, of controversy. Um, we need more of these opening shots. That's what I feel. Right. Um, so I, I guess, uh, Tal, you kind of uh, said it uh, as far as the when can we start. Um, I'll expand on that from my viewpoint the it's this is where um, any of the contributions are wherever you want there's nothing where we're saying in in this group you must contribute in this area so if you feel like 
um, where you can contribute is more use cases, we can keep adding use cases. And if there's a use case where you're identifying a best practice, then we can write that. And that's related to, you know, Tal saying, um, you, you saying, we, it's when people step up to that. Um, so that's interest, you know, need, whatever, whatever's driving you for that. If you feel like it should happen, but you can't figure it out, um, that would be where maybe you can reach out. Um, the principle of least privilege was uh, the, the reason why um, Ian and I ended up going this path is we had, um, there was a, a pretty big set of discussions um, already applying the principle of least privilege. And we felt like we could start here. So there's a discussion around this and there's best practices that are listed uh, around, around the principle of least privileges. There's already practices that are out there and including the one that we ended up uh, putting forward. So the uh, don't use root in containers as a general best practice um, that's already out there. So something that we could talk about and we feel like getting to this list of things is what's important in our mind right now. Um, but that doesn't mean that we want to stop use cases or anything. So um, Oliver, as, as far as like, how do we get to something? I think is you're wanting to, it seems like you're wanting to get to something past a set of, you know, like thousands of use cases, which could be interesting, but maybe not getting to a usable, a directly usable goal. So that's kind of my driver as well. Um, and I think with Ian thinking about this and talking through, um, as well as reaching out to other folks, like what could we do? So it seemed like the least privilege. Um, as far as ambitions or the words around this roadmap, so ambition sounds good. And I think we could do milestones. Um, we could have like an ambition to reach a milestone within a certain time period, but actually um, like even with the milestones, we could literally use like the, the GitHub. Um, let me see, I think I got to go to issues. We could use the milestones. There we go. Um, I don't know who created this, but 2021 best practices. So if we're like, we have this no root, um, I don't know if there's an issue for it, but you can add them and we could say as a, this says 2021 best practices, but we could you literally have like a Q3. And I, I personally am, have a goal of, of trying to move forward some set of some number of best practices in Q3 and Q4 to have them in place with enough content that we go, all right, we understand it. Maybe they don't all go through, but I would like to get a set. And they may or may not come from existing use cases. There may be new use cases that are added um, just based on my experience. And then uh, Tal, you, you were mentioned, so this is kind of a, aside from goals, but how do we move forward on stuff? And I, I, I definitely don't just go into GitHub and go, I must follow the structure. So my, just myself tell, I, I don't find it works for me as far as like, I guess the creative process and, and sourcing a lot of information. I need to have it a little less structure um, it's fine to have some categories, but the, when I'm working by myself or collaborating with someone else like Ian or whoever, um, we get on and start working on something. Uh, this is the HackMD that's had several iterations. If I go back through the version, it started with less of the categories. And then we started putting more and more and moving stuff, um, around. But the original um, document, and we're actually going to um, end up with a, 
a document I think that'll be added to the um, this drive was a lot looser. So Tal, I think this would go with what you're talking about where we're saying, okay, so why would you want least privileges? So this is a little bit, I'm giving you all a little bit of the view of how it works for me. It doesn't, it doesn't have to work for you. And um, Tal's, you know, talked about how he's worked through stuff, but whoever, you know, y'all on this call or listening later, if you have another way of uh, a workflow, that's fine. You know, the, the GitHub proposal format that we have for best practices is kind of a finished format, but that's not the working process. That's when we get there, we wanna to try to hit some stuff that we think is important as a group, but getting to there can be all over. So this would be, in, we, um, I can highlight here. So why would you want least privilege at all? And starting to talk about this. So this is just more of conversational. This doesn't have to do with those categories. Um, different ways of helping. Well, you can see here privilege containers. So this is not the root in containers. This is a different topic that popped up. And Tal and, um, and uh, I don't know if Victor's on this call, I don't see him. But other folks have pointed out like, what about this and this? And those are all different things that are related to um, privilege. Uh, I'm sorry, least privilege. So that principle of least privilege. So root and containers would be one of them. Um, access to the Kubernetes API and what you can do there. Uh, Frederick has talked about um, the different things you can do with like net admin and how you can affect the whole network can potentially cause massive problems. So these are a lot of topics and we've had a lot of different conversations. This is how we're working on it. You may need a literal whiteboard, whatever. It doesn't really matter. At, you can do whatever on that. And then eventually you start, just like if you're doing a draft and you have an outline and then you start working through it, we eventually started dropping in more of an organization and that was the HackMD. And then eventually we felt like, okay, we have, have this HackMD to a point where we can put a pull request in. So that's kind of process and definitely open to Tal. Um, I wanna encourage people to the workflow that you have to get to something just use it, whatever will help you to get to a point where we have um, contributions is totally fine. And I think back to the, the ambitions would be the, the high level for me, Oliver, would be, um, you know, Q3 is coming up close, but I would like to get a couple more um, proposals in, at least have them going through um, probably around least privilege. Um, handling state in a cloud native way is definitely interesting. So I'm open to whatever, but I'd like to have some more privilege uh, proposals in place. And if a new use case comes in, great, that's fine. If we go and look at existing use cases and start um, extracting the practices, as you were saying, Oliver, that's fine. But in Q3, I'd like to see and you know, this could be a milestone, like I said, in, in, in the GitHub, where we say what, you know, three practices could be a milestone. And then we have another set or whatever. But yes, for having some milestones and an ambition, and then um, backing up what Tal said, as far as like having, we don't want to have People feel you're forced to do this and you must ask time off or whatever. That's, you know, it's, we're trying to balance. We're, we're contributing in this open community. We want encouragement to meet a goal, but knowing like we're, we're all open to contribute or not.
would a um something like i don't and we can always list this in a doc i don't think we have like milestones and uh, we don't have a ambitions roadmap or any type of doc right now in the um repo you know it's in the closest thing we have is in the governance saying that the co-chairs can help build a roadmap but the there is no actual thing listed but what do you think about starting with something like a milestone and we start dropping issues in here uh, oliver and then potentially have we could write up something like a 2021 ambitions i i don't know what that doc would look like but we could write something up like that yeah that makes sense All right, anyone else? I have one idea that, um, you know, we have a lot of participants here, some that don't uh, speak out, speak out quite as often, but um, maybe everybody can give themselves homework to, to pick some kind of contribution. Um, it could really be anything. As you said, it could be fixing grammar or things on existing documents or, or commenting or contributing to discussions. Actually, just going to the discussions page, choosing something that you have something to say about and, and responding is, is a contribution, I feel, because they do move us forward. It's easy to get lost in the discussions, I think, but they're still there for reference, right? Whenever we end up working, if somebody, for example, decides to go to HackMD and start working on, you know, BGP issues, uh, well, here's a discussion that they can immediately reference and actually continue commenting on, you know, the discussions don't have to stop. They can continue growing in a way. Um, yeah, they have advantages and disadvantages for sure, but it's um, um, I, my point is any way that anybody can contribute, I think uh, we should we should all agree to do so. <laughs> contribute in the way that makes best sense to you. And please reach out if if you feel like you're blocked on contributing and and don't know where to get started or um, I'm sure everybody here um, has experience uh, that would be beneficial to hear about in some way. Um, so just reach out. All right. Well, um, if there's nothing else we can Stop here, I'll give it a minute. Does anyone have any last last minute things I'd like to talk about or comment on? All right, give your 10 minutes back for your day. Thanks everyone. Thanks. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye.